Hello all, welcome back to another video and welcome to Sammy G's World of Cinema. Today on the channel I am going to be continuing on my Blu-ray collection series showcasing all the standard Blu-rays leading up to the boutique stuff in my collection and then eventually the 4Ks. So without further ado, part 17 of my Blu-ray collection series and we're going to go straight off the bat and this one is Captain Phillips. Fantastic film guys based off an incredible true story this one. A very impactful like film that's got a real oomph to it and um, yeah Tom Hanks is great in this film. One of the pirates in this film. Um, Bark had um, Abdi, he puts on a really good performance in this as well. I actually forgot I picked this one up because um, I did uh, talk about this one in my previous video, A Walk Among the Tombstones. I've heard this is a very solid film. I think it's going to have a real like sort of um, riveting oomph about it. It's a great movie. Massive shout out to Jordan of a Movie Worm. I think this was his favourite film of 2021 and that's Nobody. Yeah, really fantastic film that's got a real John Wick aesthetic to it. Bob Odenkirk, who most notable for Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad, where he's an everyday working guy. He, him and his family, their home is invaded by this mob, I believe, and then he has to seek revenge. Yeah, great film. Um, I went to go and see this one at the cinema. Moving on to more sheer brilliance here, guys. John Wick 1 and 2, what a great um, film series. Definitely my favourite modern day action film series for sure. Absolutely awesome movies, these. And John Wick, in my opinion, gets um, better with each entry. John Wick 4, I've got on 4K, so you will be seeing that one on a later date. And I've still got this one new and sealed, John Wick 3, which is probably... I probably would go John Wick 4, John Wick 3, and literally 2-1... And don't get me wrong, I do love the first film, but they just get better and better. Cracking films they are. Bleed for this. I do remember quite liking this one. I think it is, yeah, based off a true story, this one. Um, and yeah, he goes like, oh yeah, he's, he's in like a fatal car accident. Some emotional scenes in there, definitely. Um, yeah, I did really like this film though. Probably, it was probably a one-off watch for me, but I haven't got the first um, Creed film in my collection at the moment, I have got this, um, I, can, I think I've got this kindly given. It's on Blu-ray and it's still new and sealed. Creed 2, really good film again, very solid sequel. I think I personally did prefer the first um, Creed movie, but I thought this was a fantastic sequel nonetheless. Creed 3, I thought was excellent as well, just don't have it in the um, collection as of yet. So really cool film from, um, what's her name? Em Emerald Fennell, who directed Saltburn, which I did enjoy. I think it was personally for me, guys, a one-off watch for me, that one. I did like the movie, but I think I personally do prefer this myself. Um, and that's some um, promising young woman. I thought this was fantastic. I think this one again got a bit of a mixed reception but I really did enjoy this one. I thought Carrie Mulligan was fantastic in this. You know sort of like she's getting like her revenge after the death of, of a, one of her best friends and she goes um, through the list of all the people that was associated with her whilst I think she was away I think. Um, yeah great um, performance um, from her. Um, I found the stuff between her and Bo Burnham a bit on the cringe side, though. I didn't really care for that too much. I thought, um, what's, um, oh, who is it? Um, Alfred Molina was so good in this film as well. A fantastic film, guys. I'm definitely overdue a um, rewatch of this. Talk about disappointment. Goodbye, Dragon Inn. I was so disappointed in this, guys. 
just after all the praise it got, all the great reviews. And I do get it is dealing with a bit of an important, relatable subject matter still to this day. You know, it's never a nice feeling when you see like a, you know, when there's a cinema that you're really attached to all them years and then they're closing its doors. You know, it's it's definitely not a nice feeling at all, guys. And, you know, it's it's I definitely, definitely get the um, message behind it. For me personally, I think it was just the characters. If anything, I just, I didn't care for much for the characters. There were just some really slow, drawn out scenes where the guy is walking down the corridor, where the guy is walking up the stairs and I'm thinking, oh man alive. There was massive pacing issues and yet this film clocks in it at just under, just, I think like just under an hour and 20 and I was already feeling the runtime. I know this film does have its fans though, absolute power to you guys, I'm really pleased you enjoyed this one a lot more than I did, I think this is going to be a one-off watch for me to be honest, I, I, I didn't really connect with this one unfortunately, unfortunately we just can't get on with every film that we see, but this one I was really really wanting to love and it just, I oh, just, disappointing man, but only lovers, uh, yeah left alive, God, I was, again, I was absolutely bored out. It's a shame because I do really like him. Jim Jarmusch is a director, but this, it was a great cast as well. You know, Tilda Swinton, Tom Hiddleston, um, same actress from The Guest and Alice in Wonderland, and John Hurt, who's a fantastic actor, but man, I was just bored. I think it's like to do with vampires, I think this film is. I thought some of the lighting was really good and some of the, uh, you know, like the, the colour palette sequences as well. I did enjoy all of that. It was nice to look at, but the, the film itself, the story was just pretty, it was pretty dry. But again, guys, if you really enjoyed this, power to you. So happy you loved it. Just wasn't for me, unfortunately, that one. And if you believe... They put a Sam on the moon, a Sam on the moon, Sam Rockwell in Moon. Heard really good things about this one. I, um, yeah, I am yet to check this one out. And I think I got it for, yeah, just I think it was about pound fifty off, um, I think it was from CEX. Just a little bit of background artwork there, guys. Wind River, sort of like detective case, isn't there? And they're going after like this kill after this murder. Yeah, been a while since I've last seen this. Quite good, but I think it's a one-time watch for me. That Inherent's Vice, not one of my favourite Paul Thomas Anderson films, but yeah, still very good. Um, I would definitely watch this one again, actually. Um, Walking Phoenix, Josh Brolin, Owen Wilson, Reese Weatherspoon, Benico Del Toro. It was like a bit of a crime drama when the latter part of the 60s. Yeah, I I'll need to, again, I'll need to go back to that one. But Paul Thomas Anderson, he's such a master at his own craft, that guy. Nocturnal Animals from the same director, Tom Ford, of A Single Man. And um, yeah, I thought this was pretty fantastic. I really did enjoy this one. Jake Gyllenhaal, around this time, guys, you know, was starring in some absolutely cracking films. You know, you had Prisoners, uh, Nightcrawler, um, and you had, like, this as well. You had Amy Watt Adams in there. It's about, like, um, this... Um, author in the process of writing a novel about like um, this um, marriage that really crumbled between him and his ex-wife and the novel contains a, pr a pretty subtle um, time in their period where something really drastic happens. Yeah, you got Michael Shannon and Aaron Taylor Johnson in there and Andrea Riseborough, Michael Sheen. Yeah, it's a very solid cast of that one. You know I love my music, guys, and I had to um, pick this one up. I actually picked this one up when I first met John over at Mondo Celovec for the first time, end of May last year, and that's Rock and Roll High School about the Ramones. Yeah, great film. A bit of a love letter to the band, but it's just, yeah, it is fantastic. If you're into, like, you know, that music of the late 70s, guys, and the 
and especially the Ramones, you can do no wrong with this. I got this in the um, 101 sale, I think it was um, last year when I picked this one up, and yeah, I had a great time with this one. Just a few images there in the booklet. I think this is a very good um, biopic about Tony Wilson of Factory Records. Steve Coogan, 24-hour party people. Um, yeah, great little film, this one. I did still really enjoy it on Revisit. Um, yeah, I think this is a very good film still. And you've got a great cast. Um, Paddy Considine and Lenny James, John Sim, Peter Kay, Rob, Bra Rob Bryden, Simon Pegg. Opening of the Hacienda as well and the Manchester music scene, which is one of the finest music scenes you're ever going to get in your life, to be honest, in terms of the outcomes and the, and the bands. Happy Mondays, Joy Division, The Smiths, New Order, The Fall as well. The excellent documentary film from Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright in 2021 had such a ball that year with that. This and Last Night in Soho, and that's The Sparks Brothers. Yeah, I absolutely love this. The way the film was crafted, the way it was choreographed, and learning the history about Sparks, the band, and how they came to be was just fantastic. And you get a full-length uh, live concert in there. I think that's on like the bonus disc, which is, wow, I'm definitely going to have to watch that at some point. Get like a couple of beers in and watch that because yeah sparks are really cool bands um i might possibly do a video about them down the line kayoma my house probably their biggest album i think there's a couple of other albums of theirs i do slightly prefer i've had this for a free year and i still haven't watched it and it's new and sealed i paid a good price for it i should have gone to see the stop making sense concert film because Tyneside Cinema showed that in 4k restoration I'm hoping we're going to get that 4k set from Second Sight at some point oh yeah I'll be having some of that in my collection but I need to still watch this and I do regret not seeing him live when he did this tour and that's from 2018 David Byrne American U Utopia he has got the album out as well the live album based on this tour i heard the tour was absolutely tremendous guys i'm sure i'm gonna have an absolute ball with this when i watch this i've heard the stage production and that is just up up a tier really delightful but talking heads one of my favorite bands david byrne an absolute master at his own craft. I hope there was something for everyone in this video. Do let me know if you've seen any of these titles. Guys, what's your thoughts on them? I would love to know all of that good stuff in the comments down below. So thanks for watching. Cheers for stopping by. And until next time, I'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye.